Allison Arngram. It's, it's the Allison Arngram Show, and I'm Allison Arngram. Some of you may know me as evil Nellie Olson, but tonight I'm Allison Arngram. And here on the Allison Arngram Show, we talk about things that make you feel good. The movies and the TV shows that made us feel good and the people who made them. And people who are doing things now to make the world a better and more interesting place. And I always love it. You know, I love it when I have on someone I know. And so I do again. And I'm excited. And I talked about it this afternoon. So, you know, yes, yes. Former, former baby witch. Yes, TV hostess, very successful actress and TV hostess, super mom, businesswoman, and yes, my beautiful wife for like five and a half minutes, the amazing Erin Murphy. Yay, the applause noise, yeah. Hello, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Great to see you. Fine, you look, I mean, okay, you look fabulous. We were just talking about this and everyone is watching now is going, Ooh, yes, she does. She looks amazing. Um, you do these selfies on Instagram where you're just in the car going, <laughs> and they, they, they look the same. I mean, over a period of years, they, they don't actually change because you somehow are completely ageless and you look great. And you said, you said you're just like checking your makeup and figured why not? But there's now a whole series of, and you call them seatbelt selfies. I started it years and years ago because when I would go to an event, I wanted to check my makeup before you know, you're, you're photographed. So I, I started taking pictures of my makeup to make sure I didn't need to fix anything. What? And I, I posted one on either Facebook or Instagram and it got more likes than anything I'd ever posted. I was like, it's just my face. <laughs> so you got to give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool, like you're in the car, the seatbelt, and people are looking at the background, going, "Where is she now?" And you're always like, "And you just, you just, and you look fabulous, and all." And you put them all together and go, "You know, she looks completely the same." And so I think, I think we need a coffee table book of seatbelt selfies of you just looking fabulous through this series of photos. See, I think people already think I'm narcissistic and self-centered <laughs> because literally my entire feed is my face. <laughs> so I don't You're know. insanely modest, which is amazing because you have done so much. You are again, as we always say, one of the one of these successful ex child stars. You you rather enjoyed being a child actor and everything that's come from it. You you had a pretty darn good time. Of course, you you were on a great show because you were you were Oh my god, you were so good. I can't stand it. So you were on Bewitch and you liked it. This, this is true. I I did. I loved it. I loved it. I, it was fun. It was a great place to grow up. I worked with amazing actors. I always had like animals and cool things on the set. And, you know, it's led to great experiences in my life. I mean, I've traveled the world. I've done all kinds of really cool things because I was on Bewitched. So yeah, it was good for me. I loved it. And you are a, from a set of twins. There is a twin sister. And like, okay, we explain to people all the time how on these TV shows, when they have a little tiny person, they usually have twins because they can only work so many hours and they get tired so they can switch them out. And initially they hired this adorable little set of twins to be Tabitha on Bewitched. And then time kept going on and on and on. You're getting older. Like, eh, I think maybe we're only going to do one of you. Why not? So you have a fabulous twin sister who I have met, who is also a completely fabulous person in her own right, but is not like popping up all over our Instagram. So we don't see yeah. her as much. Well, well, do tell. Yeah, Diana and I are, are fraternal twins. So even we're when so we were hired for the part, we didn't look that much alike. So um, we were really used kind of interchangeably for the first year. But during that time, they'd show my sister from the back or from a distance, and they would always show my face. So after the first year, I kind of took over the part, and she didn't play Tabitha anymore. So I, I did oh. play it for the run of the show. That's right. You were identical, and you just wound up growing up. It's like she's growing up to look like Elizabeth Montgomery. Wait, okay, D duh, I guess this is the daughter. <laughs> Diane used to cry when they'd bring her on set. TV is not for everybody. I mean, there's lights and action and all that. And not everybody loves that. And my sister, they'd bring her on and she would cry. And I loved it. So um, what they would do, they totally broke every child labor law known to the entertainment <laughs> industry. They would um, say, okay, Aaron's been on for enough time. It's time to bring Diane on. So they would bring me off set and then they would bring me back on set. <laughs> so... <laughs> they yeah <laughs> and they figured what the welfare worker would go it's twins they look they alike yeah, you yeah. Can't do yeah oh no but with that's the thing 
when we were talking about child actors, and in your case, I, I had a good time. I certainly parlayed my being a child actor into a whole bunch of stuff, as you have. So it's worked out. But it's a personality thing. And not everyone has the personality to be in show business or, heaven forbid, a child actor. And that's where I'm always cautioning people. Go, ah, yeah, I put my kid in show business. Eh, maybe, maybe not. It is a very distinct personality. And millions of people simply do not have that particular personality that they're going to enjoy that at all. There's many people, you drag them down to a set with all those people and the cameras and the lights, they're like, no. I totally lost your volume. Allison, I can't hear a word you're saying. Now I can't hear you. That's really weird. No, it says I have sound. I don't know mm -mm. why I can't hear you. It's really weird. Now I can't. No, it's totally fine. That was really weird. Every now and then things just happen and the sound just goes away or the picture or whatever. It's a technology. It's lovely. Yes, but yes. yeah, you, you had the personality. You responded to that. You didn't mind a big building full of people and a bunch of lights. This did not bug you as a kid. Well, and it's a lot of it's a lot of sitting around. I think even teenagers and adults, they have these dreams of being actors and they don't realize that 90 percent of the time you're sitting around in between the scenes. They think I'm going to get out there and act all day. But do you agree? <laughs> it's so much setting up lights, setting up. I mean, a lot of a lot of downtime on a TV set. But we say it's the hurry up and wait. It's like quick, get to the set, and they hurry, hurry, hurry. We gotta get you a makeup, and we gotta get you the clothes, and then park yourself for six hours. Mm -hmm. And so it's the hurry up and wait. And well, like on Little House on location, uh, people made things. A lot of the mothers said, Afghans. So many Afghans were crocheted during the filming of Little House arts and crafts projects. Yeah, I used to, not when I was a kid, but I used to knit on set. Agnes Moorhead was a knitter, so as I got older, I knit on sets too. It's, it's a quiet hobby. And so you were on The Witch, and obviously this was fabulous. Now, how old were you when the show ended, when you finally left? Eight. Eight, okay. So you were old enough to have had a relationship with these people, and how fabulous was Elizabeth Montgomery? Yeah, uh, she, was, she was what you wanted her to be. She was funny and smart and beautiful and, and um, kind of amazing. I mean, she was what you wanted her to be. She would not disappoint anyone who met her. Okay. See, I like to do that. When I'm meeting fans and I go, well, they came a long way and they've watched a show all this time. I'm like, well, why, you know, my father said, you don't disappoint. You did when you, it's like, sure. Okay. So she, yeah. she did the thing, which is cool. Now you had the weird thing that they changed. They changed Darren's. Um, we joke about it all the time, but was it strange as a child actor that the guy who is dad is like, well, we got a different guy. Yeah. We, we have a new dude. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't strange. Um, Dick York had hurt his back early in his mm -hmm. career on a film. And the last season that he was on the show, he was in so much pain that they had a special board set up for him on set that kind of leaned like that. And he would lean against it in between scenes. And, and he was in a lot of pain. So um, one day on set, he had a seizure. <gasps> he, they took him away and he never, ever came back to set. Oh, so um, what they ended up having to do um, during the last season, I think they did seven episodes without Darren, where they'd written the character into, um, into the show, and then he wasn't able to work. So in between um, the seasons where they were replacing Dick York with Dick Sargent, they showed those seven episodes without Darren in a row. And then they, they somehow thought no one would notice, but of course, <laughs> Noticed. Yeah, everybody noticed what that's weird well it's a show about a woman is a witch and her kid is making things fly so it didn't work but no that then that makes sense it's like the poor guy it's like okay we need to get this guy to safety so he can heal up he somebody else has to come in and do this he's sick so yeah, yeah okay that makes they, sense they talked about different things they could do there was a short time where they talked about having um, Endora change Darren's face <laughs> to explain how it was a different character, but that didn't go over, so they didn't do that one. <laughs> but you can totally do that. You can turn him into you can turn him into a frog and turn him back and go. Well, he changed slightly, and you totally you could have gotten away with that. Now, 
I have to ask, because having watched a show when I was a little kid and completely loved it and sat around doing this, trying to get stuff to float around the room and make things happen, did you want to do magic? Did you hope that you could actually do magic at any point as a child? Um, I knew I couldn't do magic. And I think it was because of, of being on Bewitched. I mean, I saw everything that went into the magic we did. But of course, I wish I could do magic in the real world. I think everyone does. <laughs> But that's right. So as a little kid, you're seeing all the stuff they're doing with the wires and poof, you're a frog and the actor walks away. So now that had to be interesting because at that age, you know, six, seven, eight years old, a lot of kids don't know. They're still watching TV and going, wow, they, you know, made that person fly. I guess they turned into a, maybe that happened. And as a little kid, you still believe stuff like that. But you're like, you're like a magician's assistant at this point. You yes. literally know how all of this stuff is done and the tricks are done. So how was that strange when like other seven-year-olds were like, wow, people can fly. And you're like, mm, nah, nah. I never told them. I never gave away the secrets. <laughs> never. <laughs> not once. Wow. <laughs> That's discipline. That is true discipline. That's like the magician's code. We're like, we can, we're not going to tell them how we saw the people in half. We're just not going to do it. That's, no. that takes enormous discipline. I, 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 admire you because most seven-year-olds would have gone ah, 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 it's not real and ratted people out so as i said you have managed to parlay this into a career you you wound up going and having a normal life you went like back to school and did stuff and you, you were actually a cheerleader now you look like someone who was a cheerleader i have to admit i see you i think cheerleader um so you were in fact actually a high school cheerleader I was actually a high school cheerleader and I was homecoming queen, which sounds like no, shut up. Oh God, I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We we ended up moving down to Orange County. So sixth grade came. I graduated from Sherman Oaks Elementary School. So after Bewitched, I went back to regular school. I kept on auditioning and doing lots of commercials. And then after sixth grade, we moved down to Orange County. So I would come up if there was a guaranteed job, but I was just a normal kid. And somehow I never auditioned for Little House on the Prairie. When they auditioned, everyone I know who's anywhere around our age auditioned. I auditioned for not one part. And someone, some people, I think you did, some people auditioned for every part. Like, I, 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 I auditioned for everything. everything. <laughs> I'm so, I, I read for everything but Mr. Edwards. I swear to you, I auditioned for everything, and I do. I know. I mean, you could have, you could have had the Katie Kurtzman part and been the little stuttering okay. girl that I tormented. I could have beaten you, you up did. several times on of the show. You could. <laughs> no, so never, amazing. Never once, never auditioned. Although um, I just found this out the other day, I don't know how I didn't remember this. Your TV dad was on Bewitched with me. He was. He was a pilgrim. It was, was during pilgrim. the whole, let's go back and bring back the pilgrims and stuff. Yeah. And there he in the hat. He was like, he was John. Um, um, Alton? Was he John Alton? Oh, yeah, he I don't was, know. Yeah, it was, they went back and they did the whole like yes. the, the, the early pilgrim thing. Yes, Richard yeah. Bull. I was I in that episode. Yeah. yeah, I didn't remember. And someone posted a photo. I don't know if it was his birthday or something the other day. Someone posted a photo right. and I thought, I didn't remember that. So. Because he worked like crazy. I mean, he was a great character actor. He was on a bunch of shows. He was on all the, he was like on Void to Bottom of the Sea. There was a, a series called Nickel. that he, he was on that for like two seasons. He was a regular. So he worked like mad before Little House and after. He was just doing you know, everything. So it's like every time he turned around. I mean, it's, it's everyone who's on Little House also was in an episode of The Twilight Zone. The number of Little House people who were in episodes of The Twilight Zone is awesome. He's like, oh, look at Star Maker. Oh, it's the reference. Um, so yeah, he worked a lot and he did, got a lot of great character parts where he got to wear like pilgrim hats and crazy stuff like that he loves stuff like that so yes yeah, so you do you have a prairie connection because there you go you have your one so you yeah you had a normal life and then you've gone on to be this hostess commentator where you're on tv all the time you get to do these things the red carpets or the hostess you interview people how did you launch that whole career because that's gone really well yeah, it's, it, luckily, it's gone very well. But um, it started when my kids were younger. And I, I love this business. I always think, of, well, what can I do? What, what's my dream job? And everything kind of pulls me back more towards TV than film, because that's where I'm, I come from. But um, I was trying to think of a job that I could do and still be a mom and still take the kids to school and be there when I when they get home. And I just kind of fell into it. I, I ended up working for the Fox reality channel where um, as a correspondent and I did like 
um, talked about the week in TV. And then I got called into other networks to do things. And I just felt very lucky to be able to do that and still be a parent because, you know, (laughs) Well, because you have a lot of children. When I was talking about this this afternoon during my reading, he said, my parents coming to the show. She has so many children. You can't believe how many children this woman has. Where does she put them all? Um, <laughs> how do you have six kids? I mean, they're growing up, some of them. But how in the world? I mean, you have six children, for heaven's sake. I do. I do. I know it sounds crazy when I say it. And especially <laughs> when I meet new people, I meet new people and they say, do you have any kids? It, you know, it comes up in conversation and I, I just say, I do. And then it always, well, how many? And when I say six, I, I apologize for it. I don't know why. How many do you have? I have a small baseball team. Uh, uh, six children. Now they're old. I mean, gosh, what good Lord. What's the, the oldest one? The youngest is 19. So I have oh, six okay. boys. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're, they're grown ups. I mean, the youngest is at 19. So they're, they're getting big. Wow. And yeah, and they're, you've raised them all. And I, from what I understand, they're all lovely. I think I met one of them once. And yes, charming. They were all like, they I all be lovely people. Have, yeah, you probably met a few of them because I brought them. Well, I see you all the time at the Hollywood Museum. So I brought yeah, some of them. Like, when there's a, um, like a Batman exhibit or something, I've, I've brought them. So over the years. <laughs> Six kids. Yeah, everyone's like, how? How did you do that? So that's the other thing too. It's like, well, that's okay, biology. Had, that's you know, <laughs> you you have you look fabulous. Obviously, you, said, you know, we, we as we said that the show was in black and white. We know it was a long time ago. Hello. So here we all are. I know how old I am. Um, you have six kids. You've had just, multiple just, careers. Just, you I know. Look it's- amazing. You Thank look you. amazing. You are very pretty, but your skin, everything. You look at everyone says, how is she? How does she do that? You really do look amazing. How do we? What is your health regimen? Uh, Why are you so fabulous? I drink a lot of water. Um, I I eat whatever I want. I mean, I'm not I'm not vegetarian. Okay, now we really hate you. Okay, fine. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. But but I but I also am active. Like I go hiking. Very, I'm, I don't just sporting. I just don't just sit around. But no, I I you know use skincare. <laughs> I used to be a makeup artist, so maybe I'm just doing some tricks. I don't know. That's Thank true. You. That's true. Because one of your eight hundred careers is makeup artist and fashion stylist. So that's that's gotta help. But yeah, you drink. You are you are sporty, as they say. You're always out doing things and hiking yeah. and doing sporty things. See, you're getting a lot of exercise. You're drinking a lot of water. It's good moisturizer. Um, it's, it's, all, it's all about moderation. I always tell people because I don't I don't believe in for me at least. I don't believe in depriving myself. Of, of something I want to eat. I don't, I wouldn't do well if I've done different diets because it's kind of a trendy thing to do. But my thing is, if you want something sweet to eat, eat something sweet. So what I, I've said for years is have a cupcake, not a whole cake and you're good, you know? Right, okay, there you go. Yeah, no, it's like if you had to be like completely vegan, gluten-free, et cetera, everything, you'd go out of your mind. <laughs> yeah. I've tried those because I, I, I have a great group of friends and, you know, we, we will work out together and do, you know, do things. And sometimes someone will say, Hey, do you want to go on this diet with me? And it'll be like a, you know, a cleanse or a keto. And I'm, I'm a supportive friend. So I'll, I'll try things, but um, yeah, it's not for me. At least. I know people do what works for them. For me, I can't imagine maintaining something like that because mm-hmm. I, I do like to go to nice restaurants and, and cook and, and eat what I want to eat. I just got back from New Jersey and I was eating fried pickles and cotton candy. So, <laughs> so okay, I'm going to go sit to exercise, lots of water, good moisturizer. And yes, in, um, let me see the 10,000 jobs, casting director, uh, makeup artist, uh, um, fashion stylist, acting teacher, and stunt double. Is this to do you stunt double? Mm-hmm. How, how, uh, how, dangerous I, stunts or just general yeah, stunts? Um, pro- probably dangerous stunts. I, I feel like I don't, I don't want to live in fear, so I don't. So um, if, if there's something, that, I, I mean, I'm not foolish. I'm very you know, aware of safety, but no, I kind of throw myself into life and I'm, I'm someone who will, do you want to try surfing? Of course. Do you want to try th- Like, so I'll, I'll try different things. So um, yes, I was a stunt double um, a couple of times. Yes. yes. Did you have to do anything that- particularly crazy or dangerous? What did you do? Um, oh gosh, some car stunts. I did um, driving a wagon with horses. That was, I guess, dangerous. But um, no, I mean, 
sometimes they'll bring me in. I did um, a film where I was Virginia Madsen stunt double and it was, it was nothing crazy. I just had to drive a stick shift and she didn't know how to drive a stick shift. Yeah, but, I think simple things. And the wagon, yeah. see, you could have been on Little House on the Prairie because I you know how have. to drive a wagon. I don't That's even know accident. how to drive a wagon. <laughs> I was there for seven years. Uh, so you have, a, I did see that there was also a job you had involving um, Hulk Hogan wrestling. Mm-hmm. There was a wrestling series and something about Mistress of Mayhem. I saw that credit and I actually questioned if this was an urban like you know, myth or if this <laughs> was does, a real thing you did. Yes, it, it does sound like an urban legend, but it's <laughs> true. Um, it was during the time I, I was contacted, I think, the first season of Dancing with the Stars and I was pregnant. So, and then they never contacted me again. So that it's like, it, you say you can't never contact me again, but I got um, a call from my agent who said, um, we have an offer for you. So it wasn't an audition. We have an offer for a series and um, it's like dancing with the stars is how it was presented to me. Sure. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds something great. athletic. I'll Sounds be right great. over. And also um, it was something called, oh, I, I don't know if people outside, Side of acting no favored nations which is oh. where everyone receives the same paycheck so i would right. be paid the same as who all the other actors on the show and so then i said sounds great and then he said um but it's it's wrestling <laughs> i said okay and he said it's hulk hogan's celebrity championship wrestling and um i said okay <laughs> and um, <laughs> it turns out they had um offered it to a lot of people and the network which was cmt the network loved me they i don't know if they've seen me in something or see my they loved me the network wanted me the producers um who were jason hervey from the wonder years and um eric bischoff who's a very famous wrestling um guy he, wrestlers would know who he is um they didn't want me they wanted um they wanted any um deal or no deal suitcase girl any one of them would have been preferable to me they wanted her, <laughs> but a young hot chick but you're like as athletic and good look i mean that's well, a thing. And it wasn't, athletic, it so wasn't you should... now i mean it wasn't when i was in my 50s it was right. um 2008 so i mean i was probably in my 40s but um but, but, so and passing for 19 so who cares but yeah no but it was it was fun it was um crazy it was um my one of my wrestling partners was Dennis Rodman. Um, oh wait, uh, they're putting up a photo now. So it was Dennis Rodman. There's me, Dustin Diamond, who was Screech on Saved by the Bell, Nikki Ziering, um, um, Frank Stallone, Tiffany, the singer Tiffany, um, Todd Bridges, and Frank Stallone, and yes, Dennis Rodman. Uh, Danny Bonaducci, Butter Bean, who's a professional boxer, and. Um, Trishel, who was um, on the real world. So um, the, pre- okay. yes. yeah. the premise of the show is that um, they had two teams and we each were assigned a professional wrestler as our coach. And every three days we would learn three moves. We would have to choreograph a wrestling match and we would have to perform the match in front of a live audience it was like a wrestling arena so, so um like dancing with the stars except you're going to wrestle we'll teach yes. you this new wrestling move like yes. a dance and, and they, yeah and they would have us do things like um um which uh, luckily i i was great at this part they would have us do things that people were terrified of like jumping off this tall thing onto one of those bags. I'm like, oh, this is easy. So um, we <laughs> we jump off those. And um, I was so convinced because it was true that um, they weren't, they weren't really taking me seriously. So I took it very, very seriously. So the wrestlers all were impressed by my work ethic. Dennis Rodman was my biggest cheerleader on the thing because I went in saying, okay, this is out of my comfort zone. Uh, people were bruised and, and injuries all over the place, but I, I asked, yeah, I asked for harder moves. So I jumped off a turnbuckle, which is like the corner of the wrestling ring, jumped off of it and did a flying cross body and knocked down Dustin Diamond. So, <laughs> you know, if you're going to do it, do it. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
See, I think, okay, this is why you look fabulous, such good shape, because you're willing to leap off a turnbuckle and slam into dust and diamond. This is this kind of approach to life. Like you Now, I've been talking about, you know, Melissa, we had Melissa Gilbert on last week, and she's up in upstate New York with the chickens. She's got the chickens mm-hmm. and, the, and the crops, and she's embracing nature. You used to have, I was alpacas. Yes, I used to, actually three times in my life, I've had ranches. Um, I've, um, I had horses, alpacas, goats, chickens, peacocks. I had everything. And, and I loved it. I mean, I really did. It was, it was amazing. But then as the kids get, got older, they kind of wanted to live in a neighborhood. You know, I mean, we were in neighborhoods, but it wasn't the kind where you could go out front and kick a ball around in the street. When they're little, they're like, oh, I can run around in nature and there's alpacas. And then they grow up and they go, I want to go to the store. Yeah. I mean, we were only a few miles away, but you know what I mean? They're, they're different. Yeah, kinds yeah, of yeah. So um, I loved it. I'm, I miss it sometimes. Like I, I do miss having my own eggs. So Melissa and I are going to talk about that next weekend, but um, it, it's, it was a fun part of my life, but most of the stuff I did myself, like I was the one who woke up at six and fed, you know, all the horses and all the animals. And it, it was a lot of work. So um, I'm enjoying the beach now. Well, you can absolutely will be comparing notes because this weekend, this Friday and Saturday, ah, we're all going to be in Burbank together because the, the big Burbank Mario, it's the, the Hollywood show they have in Burbank. And yes. I've been plugging it all week and ha- half the prairie is coming. Like half the prairie <laughs> is coming. Pat Laberto and Melissa Gilbert and Kenny Lester. And you're going to be there. It's just that you're going to be there. So you're going to get to hang with us and you and Melissa can talk about chickens. That's right. I have to say, when you have chickens, there's something, and people, I know there are people who don't want to eat chickens, and they think it's somehow cruel to a chicken to eat their eggs. A hen lays eggs, whether you eat them or not. So my chickens were were like pets. They would wander around the yard, and they're going to lay eggs no matter what. So it doesn't hurt a chicken to eat their eggs. It's good to know. And and I do like eggs, and and I do also occasionally eat chickens. As I said, small small birds and fish I could kill with my bare hands in the wild. I know small animals, uh, only the tiny animals and the big animals. I never ate my chickens. I should put it out there. I never ate that right. chicken. I have a friend who has chickens, and she does. She's like, nope, can't eat the chickens. I can't. They're they're my chickens. I might eat their eggs. I can't eat the chickens. Um, but like the raising of chickens, I I couldn't do it. That's why I'm so amazed when people say, oh, oh I got a goat, or I got an alpaca, I got chickens. I'm like, I can just barely handle the cat. <laughs> you would actually the chicken part is fun because there I did have a rooster so um the, some eggs you can hatch so you can hatch them and then you raise them and they love you so they're actually very sweet I I grew up not liking chickens because when I would go ride horses the chickens would come running out and like peck at my feet but then when you, when you have chickens they don't do that they're just very friendly <laughs> Oh, so they're sweet little things. Okay, I could probably get into chickens because that's what Melissa said. She said, well, I said cleaning up after chicken. She said, do you change cat litter? Do you change cat litter? And I'm like, I I do. do. She's like, okay. Wait, you change your cat litter, don't you? Who changes your cat litter? I I, I change cat litter. My husband changes the cat litter. Although I change the cat litter. He's like, you know, we did, we finally, his back was hurting. And so it's like, okay, you change it and I'll carry the bags out. But yes, we change cat litter. I have changed many a kitty litter. He's changed a thousand cat litters. We have two cats. So I said, oh yeah. She goes, you change cat litter. I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay, then you could totally take care of chickens. It's not any worse than taking care of cats and scooping litter. If you can deal with the cat, kitty litter, you can deal with the chicken. So alpacas, I suppose, is a bit more work. Yes, it's a bit. Although when I had the alpacas, I actually did have someone who would scoop up after the alpacas. But I don't know how much your your, your listeners want to hear this, but alpaca poop is the world's perfect. It's the world's perfect fertilizer. Since okay, it's one, of, it's See? one of the things that it's, it's one of the few manures that you don't have to do anything to in order to use it as fertilizer you can put it directly in your garden it's and they call it black gold but now see that's important really to black gold that's important to know for people who are doing the home farming thing and getting animals and saying well i need like good for an alpaca you don't even have to do anything to the fertilizer yes okay but this is <laughs> Brilliant. See, the thing you do, uh, your brother, I said, we do have to talk about the um, slimmer chillers, slimmer chillers, slim chillers, yes. uh, or slim chillers, or so I call them boosicles. Um, but I have tried them and, and they're delightful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, it's a company I, I got involved with, um, I guess I'll say organically at um, one of those gifting suites that actors get invited to where they give you products to try. Yep, yep, yep. They, they gave me products to try. I like them very much. 
um, they take photos of the actors with the products and, and um, they ended up wanting to use me on the side of a truck and billboards and things like that. So I negotiated um, my she partnership said, with the company. Hmm, you want to put my picture <laughs> on the side of the truck? We could do that. And ta-da. You wound up, yeah, yes, promoting this. That they're great. They're great. They're yes, they're an alcoholic little beverage thing, but like a they're like, vodka they're cocktail. Like otter pops. They're like otter pops for grownups. And for grown then like, you can find them. There's yeah. like a cosmopolitan sort of flavor and a lemony one, and you stick them in the freezer, and it's like having a lemon dropper Cosmo, except it's like a little otter poppy like thing. Chocolate. Yes, they're perfect by the pool. They're great, and you can get them at lots of places now, like Bevmo. Um, you can get them online, Costco. There are a lot of different places that have them. I think Walmart has them. And they're good. I got to, I thought, what the heck are these things? And they got them. Bob and I going, wait, these are great. <laughs> like, wait, I think I gave them to you. I, what, yeah, remember, we, we, did we, to see you. we totally did a surprise attack. We wanted to come see you. You were like, because you had a special meeting at the BevMo. We showed up. <laughs> we were like, that was yeah, fun. We were like, that was fun. Yeah, there I was standing by a billboard of me. <laughs> and we're <laughs> and like, oh, my friend. that was great. <laughs> we just thought it was cool. And so we enjoyed those. Now, we amazingly, like I said, in your 10,000 billion jobs, um, oddly, we played a married couple for very briefly. There was this crazy show um, called Life Interrupted. Mm -hmm. And it was this fabulous little web series. And of all people in the world, Mason Reese and people at home going, Mason Reese, yes, Mason Reese, that Underwood deviled ham. It's a bogus mod, that little kid with the, the face. And so he's a grown up person now and very funny. And he wanted to do a show, he wanted to do a thing. So next thing you know, I'm playing his ex wife. And so Stephen Wishnoff wrote this crazy show. And, and Don Wells played my mom. Oh, there's a fabulous picture. Don Wells runs the bar and she plays my mother. And, and then Michael you're Lord in it. And Michael, Michael Learned, Learned is my mom. You're Michael Learned, which is so cool. And all these cool people are in it. And the thing is, I'm now his ex-wife and I've remarried, but I've married a woman played by you, which is yes. hilarious because it's like, oh, and now I'm, and here's my beautiful wife. And you were just stunning. And we were just the cutest darn couple. <laughs> we were. <laughs> and I, I actually did it because you asked me to. It was at a time in my life, I've, I've said more, more no's in this business than I think right. anyone. So every time you know, every time we go to an autograph signing or go somewhere, someone will come up to you with an idea like, oh, I've got a script you'd be perfect for. And I just smile and nod. But at a party, you came up to me and I think with Steve Wishnoff maybe, and you said, I want you to be my wife in this. I and I said, okay. <laughs> it sounded like oh fun. Well, then it's like, here's the lineup, okay? We got done well together. You're like, right? that sounds good. Okay. You're like, but it was the same thing. It was like the wrestling show. Well, I've never done that before. And, and so next thing you know, and it was so cute, just so darn cute. And and we had so much fun doing this. And the wow. press was wonderfully funny because in France, certain American shows get over to France and are hugely popular. And others just, like, they've they've never watched The Waltons. You go to France, you would think what? they would love The Waltons. I know, right? Oh, Little yes. House on the Prairie is ginormous in France. They're obsessed. And so, it's so is Bewitched. And so is Bewitched. Now, oh, I asked um, them, I said, I yes, said, don't you watch The Waltons? Because everybody in America watches The Waltons. The Waltons, they said, no, it ran for like six months and they went, eh. Oh. Little House, they cannot get enough of it. Or as I said, if you're walking through the park with three French people and you pass a meadow, one of them will scream, I am baby Carrie, and run and fall down. Um, <laughs> With Little House and Bewitch, there are certain shows there were, and mm -hmm. so there were actually articles in the French paper that said <laughs> Tabitha et Nelly dan gay mariage. <gasps> no, really? <laughs> we a huge like French press out of doing that show. I so it was fabulous. I was like on talk shows and they had like your picture up like 10 feet high behind <laughs> me on the talk show going, yes, so you are married now to Tabitha. <laughs> and I was like, it's only on TV, but yes, she is a marvelous woman. Um, so yeah, we had so much fun with that. We just, yeah. it was just a hoot and a holler. I said yes, because like you, I've, I've been a lifelong LGBTQ supporter and my sister is married to a woman. So when given the opportunity, I thought, absolutely. Right. So it was, it was grateful. I was like, oh, wait, I, mean, I can represent. Okay. So yeah. And, and it was, it was a, and it was a funny show. And as I said, and, and Michael was so fabulous and, and Dawn and everybody. So we had a really good time doing it and it is still out there. If you go onto your YouTube out there, you can still click on it and see we're, we're a hoot and a holler. So yeah, you are so clever. And we we're talking about your kids and you do so many things for charity. Um, one of your sons is, is autistic and you've done a great deal for the various autism charities. 
Yes, yes. I've my whole life I've been involved with different organizations and causes. And I've always said it's important no matter what you do to choose something that's near and dear to your heart and, and support it any way you can. So growing up and as a young adult, I always supported animal charities and children's charities. And then um, my son Parker was diagnosed with autism and it, it did cause me to focus a little more on that. So I threw myself into it and I'm, I'm just a few days ago, I played, played in um, Ed Asner's Celebrity Poker Tournament for the Asner Family Center, which is a center for, um, for children and adults with special needs. So um, yeah, it's something that is close to my heart and, and I'm happy I can kind of put my face out there and do some good. See, that's what I like. I've always said that all of us who are in TV were given this like free gift where we're famous enough, we can do something for the charity. I've always said like some of the reality stars I see who aren't doing anything. I said, you know, any one of them could say, adopt a puppy, plant a tree and think how many help. I mean, just anything at all. And it's so wonderful when we have this, where we have a chance to say, hey, here's this thing for abused children. Here's this thing for people dealing with autism. Here's this thing for clean water anything and we're able to do that and it's such a nice feeling when it is something you know in our family absolutely and it's something that everyone has the ability to give the gift of time even if it's just a small amount of time i'm not saying people need to donate money but i think it's important to um, find something that resonates with you and and volunteer your time a little bit so it's something i've raised all the kids doing i mean um my youngest son we used to go to the animal shelter every week when he would, was not in school and his older brothers were, and we would play in the kitten room. And we would, you know, I've, I've shown them that I've been, you know, PTA president and classroom president. I volunteer at the schools for everything and kind of um, showing them by example, what it's like to give back. So when we lived down in Orange County, I was the president of the junior women's club. And I started um, a kid's version of that where um, the kids would go with us and we'd clean up the beaches and, you know, volunteer meals on wheels and all kinds of things. I think it's important to kind of keep that cycle of volunteerism moving forward because, you know, if someone doesn't show you that, you may not even know about it. So I think it's important. It's true. I started that only because like when I got a little house, like right away, you get invited to charity events, just sort of in general. Your publicist says, go here, go there. And you pop into the telethons or the Special Olympics or any of these more things. And you notice like some celebrities jump in and others are kind of like, mm, uh, yeah, uh, oh, okay, I'll do this. Or, you know, the ones who've done too many telethons and they go, which one is, is this March of Dimes? I can't, they can't remember which thing they're at. And then you have the others who absolutely go, whole hog and get in there really help. Like, Henry Winkler was always a great one. He would be reading, he'd be guy. on a telephone, he'd be back in the green room, sitting there with the executive director of the charity and their annual report going, now how much per dollar goes to, he'd like memorize their stuff and go out there. And I was like, there you go. And I would see all the, and I went to Special Olympics and I really liked it. And I wound up going the full Saturday and Sunday every year. And then I would go on Friday night. They have parties. The athletes, the kids had their own parties. And I would come to their parties. And I would go to it. And I just did a bunch. And it was so, so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Some people are like, oh, how can you do it? I'm like, what? How can I not? And now over the years, I've done so many AIDS and child abuse and everything. But to me, it is natural to want to work with nonprofits and charities and causes. Because why, why, why not? I have this great opportunity. Yeah. And for me, I've participated as a celebrity, which I'll always put in quotes because it's silly to say, <laughs> but um, as a, as a celebrity kind of volunteering my face and, and whatever, right, right. And also with my son, I mean, we go and I'm there as a parent cheering on my son who's participating. So it's, it's kind of great seeing organizations like that, which I do think is a wonderful one from every side. And so you see, there you go. You are. And like when you talk about like, OK, yeah. And then I was on the committee for this, the committee for that and the PTA. And it's like, again, six kids and on the guild <laughs> committees and acting. And then, oh, I have to go wrestle with Hulk Hogan. And it's <laughs> how on earth. Are, how do you keep up your energy? Because you do have amazing energy. Every time I see you at anything, you're at everything. And you do have you're always peppy. Oh, thanks. Um, I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I sometimes, friend. yeah, no, I think it's one of those things is that, um, 
you you can decide how you feel like it, of course it's easy to wake up and sit on the couch and watch tv so it's making the decision that okay i'm going to wake up and i'm going to go for a hike with my friends in the morning and in that so i just i've always kind of embraced the having energy thing <laughs> And yes, I found I do. I do like the coffee. I like a bit of coffee now and again. It does. It does help. Coffee indeed. and sugar. That's all. That's what <laughs> <are> my vices. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone in that one. That's good. And you shouldn't say you know worry about doing the Instagram thing. Like you know, oh, people think I'm narcissistic. You're okay. you're not vain. That's the thing. You're like terribly that's modest. I, it's so funny because I I guess by appearances people assume that I'm vain and self obsessed. But I can get ready, like truly get ready, put on my makeup, be out the door in less time than anyone I know. I mean, I can come in and put on a face and a, and a gown even and be out the door in less than 10 minutes. It's one of my skills. Well, because I know you do so many events, I'll be in an event and it's like, and then we have to like, and there's three in one day and I look and there she is at the next one and she's changed. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, I know there's things where you got a phone call, like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, do you want to come to this thing? It's at like seven and you're like, I'll be right over. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, I don't know. I've always felt like this is life. Like this is my life. I'm trying to do as much as I can. I want to go everywhere. I want to learn everything. So I've always been that way. And it's funny just thinking about getting ready and going to events. I was in the car on my way to something. I don't know if it was a premiere, but it was something fancy. And I looked over to the pastures when I had the ranch and I had to get out of my car, deliver a baby alpaca. <laughs> <laughs> make sure all was well brush myself off put on a little powder and drive away so and then I had a good story to tell and I also once had Jane Fonda pull hair um hay out of my hair on a red carpet <laughs> you Jane Fonda what I was at an event um I think it was for the Emmys but I'm not sure but Jane Fonda was in front of me and she pulled hay out of my hair <laughs> I just fed horses as I was leaving. I had on a, I had on a gown and 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 like mucky rubber boots, and I took off the boots in the car and put on like cute heels. But I guess I hadn't gotten the hay out of my hair, <laughs> which of course is must have looked adorable and is totally hysterical. And then gave Mister Bailey Jane Fon had to pick hay, hay out of your hair because you're busy birthing alpacas on the way to the red carpet. Now, see, this is why everyone bugs you and says you should write a book. As you said, you were just at an autograph thing and everyone's like, book, 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 because every, everyone has a book. But you really yeah. have stories. I mean, going out and getting, jumping out of the car, birthing an alpaca and then hitting the red carpet. This is not a thing people have in their lives. I mean, I've been asked to write a book a lot of time, a lot of times. Um, I was about to write a book maybe 10 years ago, but it was a business book book. I always think because my, my dad was very into business and investments and owned a business college um, on in North Hollywood. So I was writing a business book about um, Kickstarter. And it was like diary of a Kickstarter campaign. And then I got midway through it. And then I booked a job. And I was like, ah, it's all right. I wouldn't do that. But um, but you are but that's another thing you can write another topic. It's like you are you're a walking series of TED Talks. It's like, which of these things could you give a TED Talk on alpacas business? You are a, you know, fabulous as I say businesswoman maven but it's true I mean you looked at the thing some people just would have went gee this this chiller pop with the vodka and it's great oh my my face is on the truck and it's just like on la 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 not likes it hey 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 have an idea let's talk and turn that into a thing you Absolutely. think as a businesswoman you do these things and you parlay things and you are a brilliant businesswoman and you would have fabulous tips and information and right. things you got from your father that you I could agree. write like, you know, what the, what's Susan Orman or whatever from the TV, like the guide to being a good business person. You could absolutely do that. That is totally a thing. Well, I'm always giving friends business tips because I'm obsessed with things like the stock market and investing and, and things that people wouldn't expect me to be obsessed with. But with, with the Slim Chillers, they made a decision that probably wasn't ethical, <laughs> which started our, our business relationship where they put me on the side of a truck. 
I think some people would have sued them and turned it into a kind of an adversarial thing, but it was a negative yep. company. I loved the products. So I was able to negotiate a percentage in the company instead of taking down a company that was just starting, it turned into a partnership. That- See, and that's how I think too. When people say, Oh, are you going to sue? I'm going to go, oh, no, I'll call them up and cash in. How do we, let's get in on this action. And, and that's the smart way to do it. Do you just turn it into a negative or do you say, well, now let's go talk to these nice people here with these slim delicious and Steve, what's going on? And so, yeah, that's, you think like that. Um, so you could write a, a guide to business. You could totally write a guide to alpaca um, husbandry and chicken raising. Um, you could, if you wrote a book that was just a guide for mothers, I raised six boys successfully and without losing my mind, that you'd have a bestseller right there. Um and then just all of your fabulous stories. I mean, there's obviously there are people sitting there going, you could just sit and tell us about Elizabeth Montgomery for five hours. And we'd all just sit there. That's probably true. At, at the autograph show, I, was, I just went to, it was so funny. I hadn't done one of those appearances, signing autographs in, in years. It had been a while. So I you know, kind of jumped back in since I saw friends were there. I hadn't been on the East Coast in a few years. And um one lovely couple saw on my um, Facebook page that I was going to be there and they flew to Atlantic city. And then um, they told me how much they loved my book. We love your book so much. It's our favorite of any of the kid actor books. We loved it. And I, I was, I'm always honest. I said, I'm so sorry. I didn't write a book. I said, maybe it was Alison Arngrim. They said, Oh no, we love her book. You know, you wrote it. They, they were convinced I'd written a book and was somehow not, not admitting to it. They dreamed this book. So they knew about my book and they yes. still, so this book of their imagination that they really, wow. I wonder whose it was, or did they just in fact have some fantasy of your book? They weren't sure. They kept coming back by because it was a three day convention. They kept coming back, apologizing for thinking I'd written a book and then telling me maybe it was. And I said, and I kept naming people and it seemed like I named everyone on Little House. Was it Melissa Gilbert? Was it Melissa Sue Anderson? Um, they thought it might be. And now I can't remember. Oh, is was it, it Missy Francis? Griswold? Maybe they thought maybe it was Missy Francis. Did you know she was talking know. about the business? Yeah. The money. Mm-hmm. I run. <laughs> so you're naming every child actor on the planet. And they're like, no, 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 it's not. It was you. It was your book. <laughs> so it's pre-sold. So that's what I mean. See, if you're the, it's already sold. People think that they've already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> How can you possibly go wrong? Um, I would buy it. I would totally buy it. And yeah, and that's something people worry about writing a book. They go, well, I don't know if I want to write a book because I have, you know, I have a life. I have a personal life and a family and I don't necessarily want to talk about every single thing, but you don't have to. And when you have the list of topics, like I said, you're walking a series of TED Talks here. You have so much. You could fill over 300 pages oh, easily. and have a sequel and still like say, good, I didn't have to tell that story. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't, and you don't have to dish dirt on people. I mean, like I said, I really love, like Melissa's latest book is great. It's like so positive. It's just like, yes, yes. And now that I'm doing this and this is what my life, it's completely upbeat. Yeah. So you I, can write that. I loved, her, I loved her first book and I don't know Melissa, surprisingly. I don't know her. We're Facebook right. friends. We actually, we, we talk on Facebook. I'm going to see her next weekend. Her, her book, um, the first one, you, I'm sure you read it. Very I, love, I love that it was all about that every man she ever met loved her and thought she was beautiful. <laughs> Well, you know, that's the great thing, because when it's your book, you go, yes, yes, I am. That's good. Yeah, I can. And, so they, and But that one was like, okay, I'm going to talk about the love life and how I got here. And, and then this one is like, yeah, 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 whatever. So I'm in upstate New York now. I got a farm. I love it. <laughs> it's like, I had a hell with everybody, and I'm not doing Botox anymore, and this is what I look like, and I like it, and I'm going to go feed my chickens. I mean, it's just, it's fabulous. And so it's it's a whole other book. And I said, I, I like this one even better. But that's the thing, is you can you can write that book. You don't have to do the tell-all. You can say, here's a fab, here's a guide from others. Here's a guide to business. Here's a guide to alpacas. You could, you could put out a series. <laughs> Or not, I can just enjoy my life. <laughs> or not have to sit at the computer all day and simply go about your business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is also genius. But see, there you are. So you are brilliant. I mean, I keep telling people, she's a genius, you know. She's figured this all out. You have. You have figured out to have this absolutely incredible life. Mm-hmm. I have a good life. What would be if you get, if you had to if people begged you for advice and said, OK, what would be your hot tip for having a really great life since you apparently have such a one and so many fronts? 
Um, I think it's all about juggling. I think it's about not focusing on any one thing. So a lot of times um, a woman will only focus on her children or on her husband or on work or like or one facet of her life. And people are complex. So my life is all about juggling and making sure that I have time for family and friends and travel and experiences and, and all of that. So I think my advice was you can change your life tomorrow. You can do, you don't have to stick with what you're doing right now. You could wake up tomorrow and think, Hey, I'd like to go visit another country, or I'd like to learn a language and just turn on YouTube. I mean, you can do new things tomorrow. So I think my life is all about evolving and, and kind of doing everything. All right. Yes, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, and put us put aside ten percent of every dollar you ever make, and you will be set. And you won't even notice that you you're missing the ten percent. Says the woman with a house in Malibu. Yeah, because so, <laughs> <laughs> half the pictures, half the seatbelt selfies are like, and I'm at the beach now. <laughs> it's that way. It's right. You can't see. It's right. It's it, you're where the beach right are. There. Where the yeah, beach is. Right. I'm looking at the ocean and at your face. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so we'll have advice from Erin. Now, you do not have a website and you do not have a book. Half, half the people come on the show. And my book is that, but you are on Instagram and you are on Facebook and you have your seatbelt selfies. You are gorgeous. So, um, Facebook and Instagram, where do we find you? Um, Instagram is Erin Murphy Bewitched. And I don't even know my Facebook. I don't, I don't even know. Wait, I can pick I think up it's my Erin Murphy. I, are you just Erin Murphy? Erin Murphy. Wait, I'm looking on my phone to see. I don't know what it is. Have... Okay, she's not vain. She literally has to look herself up oh, to yeah. remember. No, I, have, no idea. I have no idea. Like I have, I have two Facebook pages. I have a private one that is really just friends. You and I are friends on that. So friends and family, I have that one. And then I do have a public one and I don't know what it's called. Um, I have no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not a self promoter. I don't know. It, I guess if you go on Facebook, I'm look. I just pulled up Facebook and entered Aaron Murphy, and I did not come up. Someone else, like it says, <laughs> um, which I is think even funnier. I think it's just Aaron Murphy. I don't know if you can see that. I think, it's just Aaron Aaron Murphy. Murphy. I think you are. I think I think you just go on Facebook and search Aaron Murphy, or you know, go to the Instagram. She's a, but indeed, um, <laughs> this is the woman to call if you want financial advice, child rearing advice, what to do with your alpaca, how to get on the red carpet in in twenty minutes or less, with straw in your hair. This is the woman to call. <laughs> Um, absolutely so much fun to talk to you as always and I will see you what are you doing both Friday and Saturday I'll be Friday and Saturday I'll see you there yeah. I will so I will see you like this Friday at four o'clock <laughs> I have I'm bringing I have bonnets I have aprons I'm bringing aprons into this <gasps> cooking thing it, it's so funny because some people at the show I just did people bring a lot of stuff and they have banners this I have my little stack of photos and a pack of sharpies <laughs> I walk in with nothing <laughs> I got stuff. I got the hats. I think, but I love. I got the bonnet because I've been doing like, the, the, the cooking videos on YouTube and stuff. So I have. I have gear. I have goodies and everything. But we will see you there. We will hang out. It will be tons of fun. Thank you so much for coming on. Always a delight. Everybody, go to the Instagram. Check her out. And um, that's Erin Murphy. And I'm Allison Arngren. And this is the Allison Arngren Show. I found my way home.